The geometric series that we've been looking at is really just a special case of a more general, wonderful series. This one is so great, you are going to want to know the binomial series. Now, maybe you've seen this guy before, maybe you haven't. Here it is. Quantity 1 plus x to the alpha is 1 plus alpha times x plus alpha times alpha minus 1 divided by 2 factorial times x squared plus alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed. And you keep going and going following the obvious pattern. Now, this like the geometric series, which it generalizes, is only good when x is less than 1 in absolute value. And instead of writing it out explicitly this way, we usually use summation notation. We're going to write this as the sum. k goes from 0 to infinity of a funny sort of symbol called alpha choose k, where you get the alpha on top of the k in parentheses, times x to the k. Now, what is, what is that? What is that funny symbol? Oh, you may recall this from previous times. These are the binomial coefficients, and they are defined in the same way that we've used them. Alpha choose k is alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2. You keep going k steps so that you end with alpha minus k plus 1. Divide all that by k factorial. Now, you may have seen this for alpha being a natural number, but the cool thing is, is that this makes sense for any value of alpha, and that's how we're going to use it in the binomial series. Now, why do we say that this is related to the geometric series? Well, this is precisely the geometric series when alpha equals negative 1. Let's think. What is negative 1 choose k? Well, we've got that k factorial in the denominator. What do we have upstairs? We have negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3. Keep going k steps, ending with negative 1 minus k plus 1. That negative 1 and the plus 1 cancel, and what we're left with is a whole bunch of minus signs, actually k of them, so that we have negative 1 to the k. Then upstairs, we have k factorial, Downstairs, we have k factorial. Those guys cancel. We're left with negative 1 to the k. And what that means is that if we look at the geometric series, if we look at 1 over 1 minus x, and write that as quantity 1 minus x to the negative 1 power, then the binomial series says that this is the sum k goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 choose k, times minus x to the k. Be careful with that sign. This simplifies to sum k goes from 0 to infinity. What do I got? I got a negative 1 to the k from the binomial coefficient, and then a negative 1 to the k from that thing in the parentheses. That's negative 1 to the 2k times x to the k. Of course, negative 1 to an even power. That goes away. And we are left with the geometric series. And even the convergence bounds match up. Very nice. There is so much more that you can do with this series. Any value of alpha is giving you a really cool series. You can check that when we choose alpha equal to a half, then quantity 1 plus x to the 1 half, that is square root of 1 plus x, becomes, using the binomial series, 1 plus x over 2 minus x squared over 8 plus x cubed over 16. Aha, I see a pattern here. But wait, minus 5x to the 4th over 128 plus 7x to the 5th divided by 256, and this series keeps going. This is really cool. You got to be careful with that convergence domain, right? If we let x be less than negative 1, we got square root of a negative number. That ain't going to fly. This is really one of the most useful series that we're going to encounter. But don't get carried away with this one. You still got to be careful to respect the domain of convergence. That's the one thing to be really careful about 
with the binomial series. Though sometimes... Hmm, I wonder... Now, why is this called the binomial series? We've got this guy, we've got the convergence domain. Hmm, I seem to recall a binomial something in my past. What happens if we choose alpha to be a natural number? What is 1 plus x to the n? Well, according to the binomial series, it's the sum k goes from 0 to infinity of n choose k times x to the k. But... I mean, look, I know from basic algebra, this is just a finite polynomial in X, right? It's not an infinite series. What's going on here? Well, what is n choose k? This is really n times n minus 1 times yada, 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 n minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial. That's the classic binomial coefficient, right? That's n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times k factorial. Got that cancellation going on there. But look, when k is bigger than n, what is happening? Oh, you get a zero up there in the numerator. For k bigger than n, this coefficient vanishes. That means that this infinite series terminates. It's a finite series. Quantity 1 plus x to the n is really the sum. k goes from 0 to n of n choose k times x to the k. And you might recognize that in terms of the classical binomial theorem. Hmm, I wonder why there's no convergence domain involved in this one. And for that more general classical version involving quantity a plus b to the n, everything matches up nicely, as I'll let you check. The binomial series is so very useful, and it's so much more than the classical binomial theorem, which you may have learned. You're going to want to remember this series.